What's going on guys, Kenny Conway here. And in this video, I'm gonna break down how to remove the missed or late payment from a opened account on your credit report. So again, my name is Kenny Conway, AKA Mr. Money Savvy. If you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're looking to learn about credit, finance, and financial leverage. So I am a successful financial educator and financial planner. I've helped thousands of people improve their credit, invest money, all that good stuff. But that's just a little bit about me. But what I wanna do is break down step by step what you should do to address a miss or late payment on an opened account. Now, there's a couple of rules of thumb. And if I haven't already made this clear, this only has to do with opened accounts, right? We have a separate video that has to do with closed accounts, but I'm going to break down how you remove a missed or late payment on an open account. Now, the first thing we have to identify is do we have less than two late Mr. Late payments or is it more than two Mr. Late payments? Because there's a different strategy for the both of these accounts. Then once we've identified, am I doing less than two list payments or more than two missed payments? We also have to identify what type of account am I trying to remove from my credit report? Let me be clear. Is this a revolving line of credit or an installment line of credit? Now, to your own edification, in case you don't know the difference, let me break it down. A revolving line of credit is like a credit card, but typically like a line of credit, something that the bank extends to you and you don't, always, you don't have to pay it off every month unless you have a balance. An installment loan is an auto loan, home loan, student loan, personal loan, meaning they give you the money up front to purchase and then you make installment payments over the course of 12, 36, already up to 30 years. And then at the end of that, the loan is paid off. Now, it's so pivotal that you know the difference between what type of account you're trying to get updated because you need to know how to approach that account. That being said, let's break down the difference between less than two missed payments and then more than two missed payments. Now, there's two strategies that you can go about. One of the strategies that's been all over the internet that many people have talked about is the, well, it's really three strategies. Um, and I'll speak heavily on one of the strategies that I've used that has worked. And, and I'll outline the other two strategies that you'll feel free to, to tap into and, and, and I'll break it down. Now, anytime you have a missed or late payment, you have two ways this is going to report. It's going to report a 30-day late, 60-day late, 90-day late. So what I'm going to be talking about is this 30-day late. Now, ideally, you want your account, when it's closed, to be closed and say, paid as agreed, never late. Because you have different variations. You have paid as agreed, then paid as agreed, never late. Well, what's the difference between this before I break down this other stuff? Well, paid as agreed means that you paid the account as agreed, but you was late. Paid as agreed, never late is what you want because you've never been late for the entirety of the account. And then credit history is 35% of our score. So if we can have a 100% history, that's what we want. And if we can get that status to not paid as agreed, but paid as agreed, never late, that's where you want to be. So in some scenarios, if you have less than two late payments, you can write what's called a goodwill letter. And chances are most companies nowadays are going to say, we reported this information accurately, so we're not going to address the late payment, right? That's what they're more than likely going to say. In some scenarios, smaller banks and credit unions may do it, but chances are they're going to be like, we're not going to agree to this. But assuming you do the pay for the lead, the, not the pay for the lead, if assuming you want to do the goodwill letter, if you do the goodwill letter tactic, my first strategy is, is you have three to six months of on-time payments. So when you make your request for them to update the goodwill, when you're showing goodwill, you already have a track record and then maybe they'll remove it. Now, again, it's like a 90, 10 chance they're going to do that, but it is a strategy, right? Now, the strategy that, um, I'll tell you about as well is you can email in some cases the CEO of that company and include their customer service department and say, hey, look, what's the deal with this? I've been a longtime customer of yours. 
you know, this late payment is really preventing me from getting approved for financing. I really think you guys need to handle this. And there's so many different ways you can go out and get the CEO's email address to email them. And that's a little bit more aggressive of an approach than the than the, the goodwill letter approach because you're literally getting the CEO involved. And if they check their email, chances are the CEO is not going to be rude. They're going to want to make sure they take care of a customer of their company. So that's a strategy. I don't really have the percentages, but from what I heard, that's like a 70, 30, uh, 60, 40 in your favor type of scenario to get that removed um, or updated. And again, you want to make sure you have less than two late payments with this strategy I'm covering, right? Three tops, but less than two late payments So for the first two strategies. Now, the strategy that I've done and that I like to do and I have done to work is you want to send a paid as agreed, never late challenge, not to the creditor, but to the credit bureau, because the credit bureau is who reports the data about you that they receive from the creditor. That being said, when you send the paid as agreed, never late challenge, as long as it's less than two missed payments, you can communicate to the credit bureau in a way to get them to remove those late payments so that way the late payments that you had removed is gonna change from 30 day late to paid as agreed, never late, and now you have that late payment removed. Now, what do you do? That's how you do it if you have less than two late payments. Now, what do you do if you have more than two late payments? Three plus. Well, what we're gonna unfortunately have to do is number one, identify, is this an installment account? Or is this a revolving account? Because there's two different strategies here. I'm going to speak on the installment account first. Now, chances are, if, it, if it's an auto loan, home loan, per, student loan, personal loan, and you have a few missed payments, but let's just say auto home and home loan, the simple fact that you're able to successfully pay off that loan, even though you have a few missed payments, let's just say three, Let's use a home. Let's use an auto loan. Let's just say it's a 60 month auto loan and you have three or four missed payments. The only strategy typically when you have more than three late payments is getting the account removed from reporting on your credit file altogether. Now, I don't recommend you do this when it's an installment loan because when you get to the end of paying off that auto loan in this example, Let's just say you had five missed payments over the course of 60 months, but the simple fact that you paid off that $35,000 auto loan, even though you got a couple of missed payments, it actually helps the fact that you can demonstrate from a credibility standpoint, that's all credit means, is credibility, that, hey, look, this person was able to successfully manage uh, a loan for five years, and although he had a couple of missed payments, we'll feel comfortable loaning him another $35,000 or even $50,000 in an auto loan example. That being said, I do not recommend that when you have an installment loan that you completely remove it from reporting because just because you get an honor removed from your credit report, let me say this, does not mean that the debt goes away. The debt is still there. It's just not reporting on your credit file. Make sense? Perfect. Now, the other standpoint of this is if it's a revolving account. Let's just say it's a revolving account and you have more than three missed payments on that revolving account. Now, there's going to be two categories of these revolving accounts. It's going to be revolving accounts that you like to use, that you get benefits from, and it's going to be revolving accounts if you're on this journey of fixing your credit that you may not even be using, it's not giving you any value, and you don't really have to keep that account open. Now, let's just say it's a revolving account that it's like a $500 credit card or a $1,000 credit card. It's not giving you any rewards points. It's not giving you any cash back. It's not adding any value to you outside of the fact that it has three missed payments because you lost your job or you mismanaged your finances and you forgot to put whatever the case was. And now you have these missed payments. And because those missed payments are missed payments, it's negatively impacting the 35% of your score. So we got to address it. So the way we do this is very similar to the way we address the installment loan. We have to get it removed from reporting on our credit file completely. Now, that's why I said, well, is this car adding value to us? Because if it's adding value, instead of just getting it removed, what we would wanna do 
is because the first strategy is if it's not adding value to you, we want to close the account completely. Then once the account is closed, then we can challenge it either for complete removal or we can still do the paid as a great never late challenge and to get it removed from reporting our credit file. Which well, chances are you will want to close it, then challenge it as a as a closed negative account because of that reporting. But we have to close it first. That's why I asked, and you have to ask yourself, is this car adding me value, right? If it's not adding value to you, if it's not giving you any additional benefits, chances are it makes more sense to close the account completely than challenge it for removal once it's closed. Now, the other thing that you can do is if it is adding value to you and you still want it removed from your credit report, but you are getting benefits from it, i.e. you like a credit line or you like the rewards points, but you just don't like those missed miss payments because you want to have 100% payment history, then you can challenge that account, even though it's opened for removal. And typically you're still going to do the paid as agreed never late challenge with the request to remove it from reporting in your credit file. So again, just to be clear, just because it's removed from your credit file does not mean you don't owe the money. You're just doing this because you want to get the missed payments completely removed from your credit report. And you would just get that account removed from reporting, but you still like that car and the benefits associated with that car. It just doesn't report in your credit file. So that's how you want to address getting a negative item removed from your credit report to be specific a late or missed payment from your credit report. And you've got to decide if it's an installment loan. In my opinion, chances are it doesn't make sense to remove an installment loan, especially if you've successfully paid it off because you've successfully paid it off. Now, the thing you do have going for you with revolving credit is if you've had this account for 36, 48, 60 months, it is adding that credit age, but it's a it's a, it's a decision here, right? Do, do I want to contribute to credit age or do I want to have 100% payment history? So as I wrap this up, we have to look at how the credit algorithm works, right? There's something called 35, 30, 15, 10, 10. To keep this extremely simple, 35% of our score has to do with payment history. Late payments have to do with payment history, which means by definition is heavily weighted on payment history versus length of credit has to do with 15% of our score. So to wrap that loop up, if I'm at a place where I'm more concerned with the history versus the, the, the length, that's an easy decision, right? It may still make more sense just to completely get that thing removed, even though I've had that account for a while, because it's still affecting the payment history of my credit report. And also assume that I have other accounts that are aged as well, which what we call age trade lines. So that's how you wanna address that. I hope this video is helpful. Subscribe to my YouTube. If you wanna get more detail on how you can address improving your credit and getting money from the banks, click the link right below. Register my training, I'm gonna break it all down for you.